If you're looking to create a presentation quickly, easily, and have it look good, I got you. Let me show you how to do it using Canva. In Canva, you're gonna to wanna to hit create a design and go to presentation. Here you'll see a blank template, but what's really cool about this is there are thousands of templates you could choose from. I could choose a Halloween one if I want because I wanna host a Halloween night and do trivia. I can click on this and I can preview this by hitting the plus symbol, which will add it to my slides. And hey, that looks cool. Maybe I wanna change the name, Pat's Trivia Night. But maybe I don't wanna do that and I you know, will want to try a different, more professional theme. Well, I can go back and I can go to maybe professional. Again, I'm just using their search to find these, right? There's, there's a lot. Let's go to this one right here, this company profile. And if I hit apply all 15 pages, that will actually uh, just kind of replace everything that's there. And let's hit replace all pages. And there it is. I have a whole slide deck already here and I can just change out the images and the words if I want to. I can add new slides, I can remove them, I can change them around. Let's say I want the goals to go over here in slide number four. And there we go, it's as simple as that. And again, I can just replace the things as we wanna go along. Goal number one, goal number two, and goal number three. All right, a couple really cool things that you can do really quickly here. Let's go to the title page and I'm gonna change this to Pat Flynn and this will be how to create a presentation in Canva. Maybe I wanna open this up a little bit so it kind of fits a little bit better. Let's center that. You get a lot of nice guidelines in there to center it. And I wanna add an image of me, right? This is a presentation and I'm presenting it and maybe I'm gonna be uh, at work or on a large stage. And it's kind of nice to have your personal brand on there as well sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to elements and this is really cool. If I go here and I type frames, I get a lot of these images that have like a, a sky and a cloud and, and a hill. Well, I'm gonna click and bring and drag over this circle. And, and actually I wanna bring it to the front. As you can see, it's kind of behind this text. I wanna bring it to the front. So I'm gonna hit these three dots and hit bring to front. That way it brings it to the front. But what's unique about this and the reason for this image here is I don't want the image of the cloud. I want an image that fits this shape. That is why it's called a frame. So I'm gonna to go to uploads and choose an image I have of myself and drag and drop it onto that circle. As you can see, when I hit that circle, it fits in there and I'm gonna let go and there it is. And now I have that shape with myself in it, but you know, I'm not centered. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna move the big image as you can see behind there, it's a rectangle to the center. Click out of it and there we go. But you know, you don't need to see my kitchen and my background there. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to drag the corners just so it's my face and maybe my thumb there kind of showing the presentation area, which is kind of cool. Boom, there it is. And I can resize this from here as well. So let's say I wanna set it up so that this is sort of centered here and then it's pointing to this text, but the text is kinda, kinda behind here, it's in the way. So I'm gonna click on the text, I'm gonna drag this edge over and kinda center it from, from there. So I can just move things around really quick. I don't need these three dots, I'm gonna delete that. And then uh, www.smartpassiveincome.com. Actually, who needs a www? Nobody, there we go. Uh, actually, if I wanna center all that, I'm gonna drag and drop a box around that kinda groups it for a sec. And there we go. Now, if I wanna see what this looks like at full screen, I go to present and I'm gonna hit just, just, just present. We're gonna keep it on standard for now. I'll show you what the other things are later. Present and there we go, full screen. And if I hit the next button, it's gonna move on to the next slide. I can go back using the back arrow. There we go. Now we still have to make some changes, right? For example, this image of these women, cool. I don't know who these people are and I just wanna change that image. So I'm just going to highlight that image and I'm gonna hit delete. And there we go, there's that hill with the sky and the cloud. That means it is a frame, so I can bring another image in there. I'm gonna go back to my uploads area, and maybe I wanna bring in, uh, let's see, there's gotta be another one of me in there somewhere that would work. Here we go. This one of me with some headphones, and boom, that looks pretty nice. I can resize it if I want, move it up, move it down. We'll just keep it like that. About Pat Flynn, former architect turned entrepreneur, dot, dot, dot. And you put a little bit more. Now this read more situation, this would be useful if you're gonna be sharing this online and this is where it's being presented and people can come in here and click around. But I'm just gonna delete that because this is gonna be a pres presentation, for example, that I do uh, in the classroom or at work or on stage. Okay, moving on. Actually, you know what? This dark background uh, color uh, doesn't really work for me. I want it to be a different shade of blue. So I'm gonna click on the background and click this color here, this little square. And what's really cool is it now gives me a bunch of different colors. 
What's also cool is this is very unique to Canva is I can I can click see all here next to photo colors. It actually gives me like the different photos that I have and I can match the colors based on that, which is really cool, right? So I can, you'll see that it kind of, you can go through and see that's kind of my skin color, um, brown and sort of darker for my shirt. Actually, you know what? I don't want that. I want a lighter blue. So let's go to light blue. Okay, it's too light. Uh, yeah, that blue is nice. It looks, reminds me of uh, University of California at Berkeley, which is where I went. Um, and what's really cool about this is that changes it on that slide. But if I want to change it on all slides, guess what? I can hit this change all button. Boom. And now all the slides are that color, which is really, really cool. Let's move to slide number two. Let's say I want to point to this microphone just for fun and call it out. This is a Heil PR40, and I want to call it out for some reason here on this particular image. You wouldn't really do this on an about page like this, but I'm going to do it anyway just to show you. So I'm going to go to Elements, and I'm going to type in Arrow, and I'm going to scroll and look for an arrow. In fact, I just want a graphic. Look at all of the arrows that I could choose from that I can drag and drop on this page. Now, you'll see a bunch of them are moving. I would just be very careful about movement. For example, if I were to put this on here, it's like if you present that and you're trying to talk, that's just going to be really distracting. So I'm going to delete that or undo. And I want to find an arrow that's sort of pointing that direction that looks nice that is still. Okay, that one looks really nice. Boom. Uh, let's say I want to rotate a little bit. So get this sort of rotate button here. And let's say I want to change the color of it, right? So it's a white one, which is fine. Let's say I want to make it red. So I'm going to go to color and I'm going to hit red and it just changes it immediately. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And now what I want to do is add text. I want to call out the name of this microphone just for fun. So I'm going to hit text and I'm going to add a text box like that. And this will be a, this is a Heil PR40 microphone. All right, so I'm going to, bring this over and I want to make this font something that uh, is maybe one that we're already using. So there we go. This is a high LPR 40 microphone. Let's just see what that looks like. So if I go to standard present, there's slide number one, slide number two. Very nice. Now let's say I don't want to use for the next slide, any of these templates. I want to, I want like a slide that's a full screen image. So what I'm going to do is I can either just bring my cursor to the middle here and add page or really quickly, uh, kind of right click that and hit add page it'll do the same thing and there we go i want to i can delete this background if i want just hit delete and what's really cool is i can add a background so let's say i want to add uh you know this earth as a background and it kind of just fills it out for you which is really nice no i don't want that i want this kind of like landscape no let's go here no let's go back to the earth just again we're just playing around keeping it fun and that could be used for you know i can add text on there and add a heading like this is the earth, the earth. This is the earth. All your base are belong to us, right? And I can make this bold so it stands out. I can, you know, animate it a little bit if I want, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but let's say I want to also add an image of me uh, in, a, in a very unique way. So what's really cool about this is I can go to, let's say, um, let's go to uploads. And let's say I want to take an image like, mm, like this this image here, which is like me trying to do like a Drake thing at one point, right? Where I have that, and then I have like this one here too, right? You might've seen that meme before. Now what I wanna do is I wanna remove the background of each of these images and really, really cool and unique with Canva here. Uh, I think it might be in the pro plan or it might be free for everybody, I'm not sure. By the way, if you wanna check out Canva, use my affiliate link, patflynn.com slash Canva. Uh, if I click on this image and hit edit image, BG remover, that's background remover. I'm just going to literally hit that once and it'll do all the work. It'll take five, four, three, two, one, one and a half, one quarter. Okay. It takes a little bit of time, but there we go. Hit apply and look at that. It literally just, it like the way it crops it is so nice. I try to do that kind of manually in Photoshop sometimes and it never turns out that well. Let's do the same thing with this one. Edit image, background remover. All right, so that is the earth, and this is maybe me saying no to what? What would I say no to? Like pollution, right? So if I literally type in pollution, and maybe there is a uh, photo of pollution. Let's drag. Oh, I dragged and dropped it on the wrong place. I want to drag it right there. I want to make it smaller. I can move it. No to pollution. So let's actually just see what this looks like now. This is a very random presentation, but anyway, 
Here we go. Slide number one, slide number two, slide number three. This is the earth. No pollution. Nice. All right, let's escape. Now, let's say I want the transitions between slides to be a lot nicer, right? A smooth, maybe dissolve or something like that, or maybe it slides up from the bottom or something. How might you do that? Very simple. I'm going to right-click on these three, or just click on these three dots or right-click, and you'll see Add Transition. You can see it kind of goes from left to right, and that's where the transition is headed. So I'm going to hit Add Transition, and I'm going to hit uh, Dissolve because I like the Dissolve. And I usually like the, the, the Dissolves to be a little shorter, like 0.2 seconds. I find it to be a little bit smoother that way. And if I hover my mouse over any of these, you'll actually see what that transition looks like as a, as a preview. As you can see there, None, Slide, Color Wipe. Anyway, what's really cool is now this transitions into this with a dissolve, but I wanna do that all the way through. And all I have to do is hit apply between all pages. Boom. But let's say I don't want that in one particular area. So let's say that the transition from, uh, let's have our goals be next after the Drake um, Earth image. Uh, let's do a unique transition there. I'm gonna hit change transition. And I want that one to be maybe a, a stacking from the bottom, right? So this is from the top. I want it to come from the bottom like that. And maybe we'll make it a little bit longer. Half a second. Actually, let's make it a, let's make it one second just so it's clear. All right, let's go back to slide one, hit present, and see if the transitions are the way we want. So we want this to dissolve. Very nice. Another dissolve coming. And then this one is gonna slide up from the bottom and it's gonna reveal our goals. Oh, that was really nice. Very cool. Let's hit escape. All right, let's work on this page because. This is a very common use case for slides is to kind of reveal certain elements as we go along. Um, you'll notice that there aren't a lot of bullet points, like really long bullet point lists here. And that's actually great. It forces you to really hone in on the big ideas. And that's really key. You don't want just paragraphs and a ton of bullet points for people to read off of that you're reading off of and then your presentation is less engaging, right? Main points and you can reveal them sort of one after another, which is what we're gonna do here in a sec. But I wanna change this image because this door doesn't really mean anything to me. And I'm gonna right click that and delete it. And as you can see, there is a frame. So I'm gonna go back to, let's go to, um, let's just type in goals and see what happens. Maybe goals would be better with a bullseye or target. Yeah, I like that. So let's do bullseye. And okay, I like this. So I'm gonna drag and drop this one instead. And I guess I didn't even need to delete that initial image, but there we go. Our goals, one, two, and three. Now, a lot of presentation software allows you to select elements and when they appear on that particular slide. Uh, Canva currently doesn't allow that, and that, that's actually okay. I'm gonna show you a very quick and easy way to have certain groups of text, for example, or even images appear one after another. And I actually prefer this method because many times I'm asked to export my slides or, or share them with people as images and not like a slide file, in which case I can still have the building of those happen in that case versus if um, I have to export it and it's just a single slide that, you know, in the software it animates, but on the PDF file it doesn't. It still works out this way. I think maybe they're going to open that up later, but uh, this is how it's done. So I want goal one, goal two, and goal three. I have three goals. So that means I'm going to make three different duplicates of this. So this one duplicate and, or I guess it's a triplicate, right? One, two, three, slide four, five, and six, all the same. I'm going to go to number four. I'm just going to drag and delete goals two and three because that's the first slide they're going to see. Here on the second slide, I'm just going to delete the last one and then goals Number three, that'll remain on the, la on, on the last one there, the third one. So if I hit present, you're going to see this. Let's go back. There's the earth. Goals, number one, number two, number three. Now let's say I was like, no, I, 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 I want uh, the goals to show up first and then number one. So I'm going to duplicate this page and then now delete the first goal. Make sure you're not deleting other elements. If you want to select multiple elements, hold shift and then click on those elements and then hit delete, for example. So that will be the first one that pops up from the bottom. So let's go back to Drake, Earth, Pat, Pollution, Bad, and I'm gonna hit next, our goals. Here are our goals for the year. Goal number one, I'm just clicking forward. Goal number two and goal number three. Very simple to do, as you can tell. Let's say we want this slide to do the same thing, but instead I want business description first, product offer first, or next, uh, future plan next, and then target market next. So I'm gonna, there's, since there's four things, I'm gonna duplicate this a few times. Uh, Command D is a very nice shortcut for this. And I'm gonna go back to the first one, and I'm gonna delete everything but the first one that I want to show up, right? 
because that will show up first. This next one will delete everything else except the one that we want to pop up. Uh, let's see. So that's, oh, there we go. One, two, and then this one will be, let's see, um, target market will be the only one that's not there, and then boom. Okay, so let's try it from here and see what happens. Present, one, two, three, four. Easy peasy, hitting escape. Now let's go into the presentation sort of options here real quick. Um, if I go to present, we've been doing standard, which allows you to again present and show full screen so you can preview it. Um, if you go to autoplay, you can set the speed to automatically have slides advance based on this number right here. You see this where it says edit timing. If I say I want this to be uh, like one second, right? Or I can apply it to all pages. I'm not gonna go through this, but what would happen is if I, if I hit present and then go to autoplay, I hit play, the timer's going. They will advance based on the time that you set. And that's for maybe more choreographed presentations that you might do in the future or even like quizzes or something like that. Just just so you know. Presenter view is what's really special here. If I go to presenter view, you'll see two things pop up. I'm gonna hit present and you'll see two windows. You have your presenter window back there, but this audience window. Now, typically when you're in a presentation or you're in a, an, an office and you're presenting, you might have a projector or a particular monitor or screen that is showing the screen to everybody else. That is what this window is for. If you are presenting somewhere, this is what your technician would need and they can drag and drop this to that particular screen and then when you hit en uh, enter full screen mode, they're only seeing that slide that is sort of active, right? You are seeing what's back here. I'm just gonna move this aside so you can see it. So presenter window, this is what you see. You see the current slide. This is the same thing that everybody else sees, but you also see the upcoming slides as well, which is super handy because you can just kind of lead into the next thing and then open it up. You'll also see notes for your design, and that is during your editing process, you can actually add notes and maybe handy uh, triggers or other uh, keywords or tell that story or whatever it might be to just remind you to tell that story during this particular slide, which can be really, really helpful. Uh, to get back there and actually to add those notes, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is go down here where it says notes and I'm just gonna go, hello, this is a test. I'm gonna go to present and then hit presenter view. As you can see, there it is right there on the right hand side, hello, this is a test. And that way, again, you can be reminding yourself essentially, your future self to say certain things or tell certain stories, et cetera, which is super handy. If you have any quotes you wanna share, um, typically I often recommend that in the notes area, um, don't, fill it too much. Just have trigger words and other things that can remind you about certain things. And obviously you wanna practice so you get it. Now you might be wondering, what is this comment bubble here? This comment bubble is for your team. Perhaps you might be coordinating and working with somebody else on this presentation. So I might say, uh, you know, um, add business plans to this slide. Okay, and now anybody else who I have in this presentation kind of working on it with me can see that. And if they finish with it or, or they resolve it, I can hit, uh, they can hit, or you can hit check mark, and then you'll know that that is done. It's also a great way for you to remember what things you still need to do. So as you're working through the presentation, you might say, uh, okay, I'm going to remind myself, um, update the photos here. And this way, it's a reminder for you to do it before you go and actually do your presentation. It's a, it's, it's a to-do list or checklist or reminder list for you to go back, which is really, really handy. I've used that several, several times. I'm just gonna click on this. Now, if I go to share, share is really special because uh, this is pretty unique to Canvas. You're able to not just create your presentation here, but you can share it as well. You can share it with other people who you want to have access to edit it, but you can also share it with people who you are presenting it to. So this is super handy if you're gonna be offering your slides to anybody. Maybe you do a webinar or, or speak somewhere and you're like, hey, I'm gonna give you the slides. You just give them the only view link or the view only link and that way they can get those slides immediately without you having to export it and put it into Dropbox or something like that or turn it into a PDF. It's all right here, which is really great. You can also present and record. If I hit present and record, that means that I can actually play the slideshow, it records my camera, and now I can turn it into a YouTube video, for example, or um, a, a helpful video for somebody else on my team if I'm presenting something. Uh, I can have the link be something that anybody can use or only I can access, et cetera. I can download this to my computer if I wanna do it more traditionally. I can print it out if I want and even share it on social.
Now, more than likely, you're not going to be able to finish everything all in one sitting. You have only pockets of time to work on this. You go back to home, you open up Canva again somewhere else, somewhere else on the other side of the world, and then boom, your presentation, if you scroll down, should be right there. There's Pat's Trivia Night. Um, I don't know why it's sh showing that, but uh, there it is. Just you can pick up where you left off, and all the elements, all the graphics are here, not on your computer. So even if you were on somebody else's computer as an emergency to fi fix or finish something, all the elements are here. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's not on your original OG computer, uh, except for sort of things that you didn't yet upload to the Canva system. So this is Canva. patflincom slash Canva is my affiliate link. Check it out. Go get it for free. If you upgrade to the pro plan, I do get a little kickback for that, and I highly recommend it because this is like the best tool in the world for presentations and just graphic design in general. I want to wish you the best of luck on your next and upcoming presentation. If you like this stuff, hit subscribe. i got more things to help you throughout your career as a creator. Let's do it. Good luck.